you know, just, you know, I don't care. Just, you know, fucking, I don't give a shit. There's nothing that's going to hurt me you know, that you're going to put on that damn thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that's why I look when I see these people walking around with these damn masks on still, you know I'm like, if, you know A if you ain't got it you probably ain't gonna get it you know and B, you know even if you did get it it, it wouldn't you know probably do much more to you than give you a, a serious cold or something like that that's about it. Yeah, anything can get you, anything can get you. But uh, I'm not gonna walk around scared to death. To. I'm not gonna walk around scared to death of everything. Well, it's funny is that you know everybody walking around with a mask is just being basically being programmed to fucking be controlled by the government. Well, even that, even that to the side. I mean, it's a fear. It's a it's a fear thing. I mean. It's, the people uh, who are walking and, around with their masks, they're afraid. They're afraid that they're going to... Hey, get all, these bull, all this bullshit about a new variant, which is a fucking lie, all this bullshit about the numbers keep going up, you know, is a fucking lie. It's hella funny because I got a friend of mine in California who's a virologist. She, she tells me straight up that, uh, you know, the government's basically lying to us. This thing has been airborne. Everybody has it. The only reason the numbers are going up is people are going and getting tested. That's it. You know, I don't. I just don't care. I mean, I just, I really just don't care. Like, you know, if, if I'm, I'm of the, I'm of the opinion that if it gets me, then that's the what, that's what was meant to get me. You know, I've, talk, I've been through a ton of other shit that ain't got me. <laughs> I just. Uh, <laughs> shit. Back. Back. In, back to the. Uh, Back in uh, fucking 2014, when H1N1 was running around, I was working at a, uh, I was working at a college bar, and basically I contracted it, and you know that's when you know good old Obama was president, didn't tell anybody that it was floating around, that fucking piece of shit. Oh yeah, six six dude, six months into it, he's like, oh by the way, uh, there's H1N1 by the way. Yeah, thanks a lot, fucking Joker. Piece of fucking shit. There was a lot of that shit. There was the H one N one. There was the bird flu. I know. Food, the H one N one. Fucking. Uh, I was in bed for four days. Uh, it attacked my respiratory system, and basically, I felt like I was going to die. But I made it through it without going to the hospital and everything. I thought it was just a cold. Come to find out, I had H one N one. But. Yeah, but anyways, so I, I was talking with my friend Candy, and she's like, she's like, if you got H one N one, and you survived it, you're not gonna get Runa. And I said, really? She goes, yeah, it's in the same coronavirus class, and everything. And once you once you've contracted one of the the viruses, your body automatically builds up you know antibodies against it. So there's no way of contracting it a second time, whether it mutates or not. Yeah, you can't get them again after that. Uh, it's like German measles. I got German measles. I, I could walk through a whole fucking room full of people with measles and not get that shit. Yeah, my mom was pregnant with me when she had German measles. And they, they were afraid that that was going to kill me. No, kill me, not her. But I thought that was going to get me. It didn't, but they thought it was going to. <laughs> I tell you honestly, I, I listen. I, I'll be honest with you. When I had the heart attack uh, year before last, uh, yeah, ever since then, it's just no, I, I just it just don't have no fear for me. I just I just am not scared to go. Like I'm, I, I was ready to go then. You know, I was. I mean, that's what I felt like. I felt like I was dying. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. So let's go. And then it didn't happen. And I'm like. Okay, well, I'm still ready to go. <laughs> you know, it's like, let's just do it. Uh, 
but uh, it was real scary at first. But then, like I said, once, once I got, once I accepted it, it was soft, you know, just like well, a you switch. Know. You know, it's really funny is I, I see these people driving in their own cars wearing a fucking mask. And I'm like, you fucking yeah. morons, dude. All I, I imagine, dude, all I imagine them is laid in bed alone with a condom on. You know, they're sitting there like, you know, I might have sex, so I'll just protect myself. But the doors are all locked and I'm home alone. Motherfucker, you're driving in your own fucking car with the fucking windows rolled up and you're wearing a goddamn fucking mask. Please, drive that car as fast as you can to the nearest fucking bridge and go the fuck over it. Damn, dude, that's a little hard. Fuck those fucking sheep, dude. They all need to be fucking euthanized. Well, it's like they say, those masks last two, maybe three hours and they're, you know... They're supposed to protect you. How about all these people that are going in and working an eight-hour shift wearing a mask, serving food? Well, the thing is, the thing is, this is not, they want to say it's a particulate, and that's fucking bullshit. It's fucking, it's airborne. Let let me, let me ask you something. Does, Does your pants prevent a fart from escaping? No, it doesn't. Can you smell a fart to your pants? Absolutely. The same fucking cloth that they're using these stupid fucking masks are not fucking... We've been masked up for a year and a half now, and the numbers keep going up. Masks are not... the. It, basically, the herd immunity is the only thing that's basically going to run this thing into the ground. And what they're trying to do is keep us from getting herd immunity so that they can keep perpetuating controlling the government through fear and misdirection. Oh, dude, uh, each and every member of Congress has stock in a company that fucking makes P, P, uh, PPE gear. And what's really funny is that this, this, is a, this was a designer virus. And it basically, what did it attack when it first, when it first hit the United States? What did it attack? The elderly. Remember? Yeah. And all the elderly were susceptible. Well, and then it started moving down the scale, right? But majorly, it was the elderly, right? Well, who has the highest elderly population in the world? Nope. Yes. Now, in a communist country, they still have to take care of these old people. They can't force them to work because basically they'll just die on them, you know. And even though they, you know, they have the best human rights fucking, you know, <laughs> human rights. That, I mean, they're they're stellar when it comes to human rights, right? Fuck. So what they do is they they literally let this loose on their own population to thin it out because they can't sustain four billion fucking people. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, um, China might be huge, but almost one third of it can't be lived in. Yeah, it's called it's called a thing called the Gobi fucking desert. It's uh, the Gobi desert is the second largest desert in the world. Uh, the largest one being the Sahara. Dude, go go onto Google Google Maps and spin the world around and then kind of zoom in on China and look at the Gobi Desert. Nothing. There's fucking nothing there. There's probably one Chinaman out there going, oh, finally, I'm alone. Fuck, fuck my relatives. I hate them. Yeah, now this this pandemic was basically been orchestrated. Yeah. 
Well, you know, okay, but also go and go to the CDC website and look at the CDC guidelines. Now, even post mortem, no matter what you die of, they have to do a nasal swab test. And if there's any uh, particulate, it has to be automatically listed as a COVID death. That way, that they can they can track numbers, right? But it's supposed to say uh, not a COVID case, non COVID death. Well, the media just ran with, oh, women, COVID case death. Okay, that's what we're doing. And so, you know, Bob, who comes in, you know, gets his, he's dead. He gets his nose swabbed out. You know, oh, it's COVID. He's got COVID. He died of that. No, it's not that big old fucking two foot fucking hole in his chest from the shotgun. No, no, it was COVID that killed him. Dude, in the in the state of Michigan alone, they did a forensic uh, review um, of all the COVID deaths in there, and uh, basically they found uh, almost in just uh, four counties alone, over seventeen thousand COVID deaths were not COVID related. They were like car accidents, uh, shot shootings, and shit like that. Okay, so that's seventeen thousand. So let's say if they've miscategorized seventeen thousand of that. The, the number that they're giving us right now is probably off by at least two, three hundred thousand. How about them Titans? Fuck them Titans. They're going down. I know one thing, but they might, they might go down, but it won't be the Raiders that take them. Yeah, they won't be playing the Raiders. The, if anything, it'd be a, well, the of course they won't thing. be playing the Raiders. That'd, that'd, that'd be like a professional team playing a high school team. Oh, whatever, dude. Your Titans are not that good. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. Dude, when, when Henry when Henry goes down, I swear to God, the rest of your team goes down like a prom dress on fucking prom night. Come on, man. Why does everybody try to... Why does everybody try dude, to, your, that, Titans, that's your Titans fucking... You, your Titans lucked out so much this year. They, 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 there's no yeah, skill they get, they, get, they get lucky an awful lot, don't they? I guess. <laughs> But, you know, it's really funny is that every time they make it to the big show, they choke like a motherfucker. Yeah, hey, did, wish, you do, did you hear? You're, 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 you're probably right. I just wish I could, say, I could say the same thing for the Raiders, but they never make it to the big show. So I'll never know. Uh, I don't know. We've got more Super Bowls than you guys will ever see. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew you'd shut up on that one. Sit down, son. I mean, do you guys even have a Super Bowl? And fuck you. No, I've seen fucking two of them, so fuck off. But no, have you guys even won a Super Bowl yet? I don't. No, no, that's not. Sit, sit down, pick up your crayons, and keep drawing, all right? But we're talking about recent history. We're not talking about ancient history here. Whatever, dude. Dude, we still have a better winning record than you guys. You're insane. There's no, they don't, they don't have Look a winning at, record for shit. Google that shit. The fucking the Cleveland Browns have a better record than the damn Raiders guy. Over the history of the entire uh, of the entire team's existence, you're higher than a fucking kite. You need to if roll you, the windows you, out you and stop smelling okay. the exhaust. We want to talk percentages. We can talk percentages, baby. I can tell you that right now. The Raiders, okay, I'm going to look this up. I guarantee you the Raiders, I bet you the Raiders don't even break 15%. Go ahead and look it up, Bob. They have been, they are, they have I'll, a I'll sit here and swirl my coffee while you do it. Uh, better make sure it's not Kool-Aid. Hey, hey, you know what? It's really funny is that I heard that McDonald's is no longer holding, a, they won't allow a Titan uh, toys uh, in their Happy Meals anymore because they're a choking hazard. <laughs> Statistical fact, the, the Raiders have the most winningest record on Monday Night Football. Yeah, you pick one night. 
No, I'm just saying you Monday call Night him. Football. Call him. Go ahead, man. Google that shit. I'm Go ahead. Right now. I, I, and then I when you start crying, I'm going to start laughing. I got to type it in right now. Shit, just uh, in John Madden's tenure uh, for 10 years as the Raiders coach, he had he is the most winningest coach. Dude, beating out people like Lombardi. Okay, so, yeah. All right, taking in the AFC and the NFC teams together, the Raiders are below, way below, where the Titans are. The Raiders come in 24, and the Titans come in 16. So you're, you're way down, basically. Total, win, total games won percentage. You guys are 24, right, the AFC head, and the NFC together. Actually, better than I thought they were, so I thought they were even lower than that. <laughs> you guys beat the Chiefs? I can't believe that. The Chiefs have the worst record than the damn Raiders. Dude. That's terrible. No, no, I'm looking at it right now. And if you look at it, this is what this is what they call spin. This, 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 he's going to do what they call spin. No, no, I'm just going to show you something because you're because you're looking at something that's probably only going back to fucking probably 1990, more than likely. Now let's go back to 1960. I said since the team has been created. There's right. no and way. There's no fine, way that the but, Titans could even be close to that because they listen, didn't even come into existence until what? 2002? Uh, 2002? And that's exactly why I said I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up by percentage, not by not by the total number. Yeah, percentage, dude. I could. You know what? I could throw a percentage out there too. Now, why don't we just go by season by season? Okay. Look, tell, telling me that telling me that the Raiders have won more games simply because their team has been in existence longer doesn't do shit. That doesn't mean any damn thing. Uh, you know, yeah, it I, does. I can, dude. Tell, I can tell you, I've drank more you than a five-year-old. What the hell's that, that mean? They were not. God, because what you would you'd rather play a percentage than actually know the facts. I'm just telling you. I, I, if you sit there and say, "Well, who, who do you think has drank more sodas?" A 20-year-old or a 5-year-old? Well, don't shit. Who do you think? Well, you know? I don't know, man. It depends on the 5-year-old, man. I know some in Chicago that are about just, 300 pounds. Man. That motherfucker hey, be drinking I'm 12 okay, knocks in his fucking head. Hey, who so, gives a so, shit so, hockey season? So then you go, you're trying to go off. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. You know, you got the... Just, that's just a failed franchise, man. I'm sorry that your team isn't really all that great. No, it's just a you know, failed franchise, man. Really right. No, it's not, dude. You just think it's a fra failed franchise, okay? But I'm looking. I'm looking right now. Just okay. even on Wikipedia, and if you if you just like you know rest that neck for a second, maybe I can show you something. From 1960. Let me, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's 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 ask our let's ask our neutral observer here. Exactly how much he's heard about the Raiders in the news in the last 10 or 15 years. I don't know. They went to the Super Bowl against the fucking Tampa Bay Buccaneers and made a mistake and called all the same fucking plays that John Gruden fucking made. That, that was a fucking mishap. I'm just saying they can go to the, they can go to the Super Bowl next year and nobody would give a shit. Dude, dude, your team. Titans, your Titans are the hottest fuck last year. What happened? They got their asses fucking stomped. I guarantee you, if you ask, I mean, people have more, they, they have a more of a name recognition than the damn Raiders do. Only in Tennessee. <laughs> anywhere, no, I'm anywhere. Dude, do you know what's, do you know what's the most uh, sold uh, merchandise in the NFL? 
fucking Raiders. You know, it's the second one is Patriots. So don't tell me that they're unpopular. You just don't like them. What? Anyways, can what I just say something real quick? For? Are you telling me that you're, you're telling me that you actually believe that the Raiders sell more merchandise than the Patriots do? Hey guys. Absolutely. Hey. If you won't let me talk religion and you won't let me talk politics, get off the damn sports. We don't care to hear you guys holler back and forth. Who's that? That's, That's big butt. Oh. All right, just one I'm last sorry, thing. Hey. Somebody. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> just one last thing. Between 1960 uh. and 1981, right, or 1980, the Raiders – we're literally in first place of the AFC West. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ten times. You guys, you guys haven't won your division that many times ever. <laughs> like ever. <laughs> now, now that you guys are like uh, – got a bye week and shit like that and you're out there on the road tooting your little horn well have fun with that i think you ought to put sports in the same category as religion and politics because if you guys going to keep talking really the uh, damn sports i'm going to start talking politics cool go ahead shoot why the hell would i want to talk politics they all suck well, because, because <laughs> sports because sports is a lot more entertaining than politics. Not, no, not if you're a Raider. Not a, not a. <laughs> it's not entertaining at all if you're a Raider fan. That's all I hear when you talk, Shield. I swear <laughs> to God, dude. You, you like that? You like that five-year-old in the back of the class, like I don't know, picking his nose and eating the paste, and then mocking the teacher because the teacher's like, "That's gonna kill you, no do it." But again, I won't sit here and try to explain shit to you because I have neither the crayons nor the time to explain it to you. Hey, you've eaten all your crayons. <laughs> right. Hey. The thing I don't like about sports is when the taxpayers build a damn big ass stadium and the rest of us can't afford that are paying for it to go in and get a hamburger or a hot dog or a beer or even get in because we can't afford the damn cost that they make it. They all put it in their pockets. Well, I mean, and the problem is, is because the NFL is considered a nonprofit organization. So that's how they get away with forcing cities to build these stadiums. Yeah, look it up. Yeah, the NFL is literally a nonprofit organization. They don't, they literally don't pay taxes on half their shit. Nope. Damn. I'm going to have to take off and go eat. Cool. We'll keep talking sports then. <laughs> go right ahead. To be honest, we weren't really talking. We weren't talking sports anyway. We were talking about the Raiders. They don't have nothing to do with sports. Yeah. Yeah, we got more, we got more motherfuckers in the Hall of Fame than you'll ever see any Tennessee Titan. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, oh, just for the, the record, hey, just for the record, there are more fucking Raiders in the Hall of Fame than there is a fucking Titan. Yeah, they're called Janders. Yeah, they're called janitors. <laughs> Shit, you're fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, but at least hey, at least we've seen Canton, Ohio. You motherfuckers <laughs> can't even find it on a map.
No, actually, all the stuff that I was saying earlier, I just don't give a shit. Anyway, I just like, I just like taking the opposite side of my, whatever I have to think. Yeah, I could tell him the sky was uh, fucking blue, and he'd be like, nope, 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 that's just pink. It's pink, and I'll, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> I, I can say, hey, you're supposed to wipe your ass from the front to the back. And you go, nope, you need to go the other direction because you're missing out. You're like, what? I try to wipe my ass, but every time I do, you think I'm slapping you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're trying to wipe your ass, it must take all day because you're nothing but ass. Hey, oh, on a serious note, though, there's a jack, you know, you said you there wasn't a jack in the box or a white castle anywhere near you, and actually, if you go straight south from Lincoln down, uh, oh, shit, what, what highway is that? I forget which highway. There's, there's literally a jack in the box probably about 30 miles away from you. Yeah, in Kansas. It's still 30 miles. I mean, what difference does it make? Where? I mean, 30 miles, 30 miles. Cool. You know, I, I realize you drive for a living, but yeah, you know, I ain't driving no fucking 30 miles, dude, when they can put one in my goddamn city. I'm just trying, you know, I'm, I just didn't know how serious you were about one Jack in the Box or White Castle. See, just trying to help the man. He, he's still attacking me. Yeah, I don't know, man. You're, you're the kind of, I don't know. You remind me of like a tweaker. Like he steals your dope and then he helps you look for it. Yeah. That kind of help I don't need. <laughs> I've even thought thought about stopping at the White Castle right there at uh coming up uh, in uh Saint jo uh Saint Joseph, Missouri. They have a White yeah. Castle right there in Saint Joseph, Missouri. I was I'm going to stop there, they come, I'm heading up toward where you are and picking up a great big old pack of them and bringing them to you because it's still not that far away where they still be good by the time I got there. Got yeah, St. Joseph's fucking three and a half, almost four hours from us. I know. I mean, I know because we, we vacationed down at Branson. I'm just saying that's the nearest White Castle that I know of. I wonder why they don't have any in I don't know why. It's it, it I think a lot of it has to do with uh Runza, which is a fucking dog shit fucking place. But I mean Nebraskans are proud of it, yay. Well, you're welcome for your vicarious moment. Like I got to say it all the time. At the end of the day, Ashville's one of my favorite people because so much stuff just bounces off. He don't give a shit about another, really. It just all bounces off of him. Well, sir, I am just 17 miles away from you Hey, I'm, bar 
intro for a minute, just so everybody understands. All right, be back in a minute. What? 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 Hi. All I heard was just so everybody understands, and that was all I heard. I think we should wait until uh, Red Butt comes back in and then start talking to Portland. But we got we got to come up with something else. We got to we got to come up with something so ridiculous that it just like a soccer like your say, say something about like your favorite soccer team and just make something up, right? Just make some shit up, you know, and then just keep it going. We, we can, you know, <laughs> we'll just keep fucking with it. Talk about like bridge club or something bowling. Right. Guys, hey, you guys know about that, you know, the, the Texas bass fishing team, right? Oh, man, they're so awesome. <laughs> Vancouver bowling team. Curling. Curling. Oh, my God, that's terrible. That's actually the worst sport ever. Well, I don't know. Ballroom dancing would probably be the worst sport ever. I've never understood that sport. Like, you know, I thought I thought it was kind of like shuffleboard or something. You know, like. I to watch it, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. I really don't understand what the what the sweeping is supposed to do. It speeds up or slows down the thing they're throwing. The rock. Yeah. Somebody had to invent that sport, and I'm just thinking to myself, you know, we need to find that person and beat the shit out of them. A rock with a fucking handle on Not sure. I think he broke down in tears and left. Uh, I don't know. I, I probably the first thing I'm going to do is take a shower because I just feel like it's been a day or two. Not that I did that much to get dirty out here, but at the same time, I, you know. After a day or two, you start doing. Let's see, what did I think? Not last night, but the, uh, that morning before that. That's been about a day and a half. I hardly drive at all when I'm at home. Usually, I just my wife drives everywhere. I just ride around with her. I mean, don't get me wrong, if it's snowing or something out there, I mean, if there's inclement weather, I drive because she's not comfortable with that. <laughs> she gets really nervous when I back up really fast. Like, I'm, I'm so used to backing up that I can back up full speed, and she's just like, hello, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, like, <laughs> All 
She's, I mean, she's been with me on trips before. She doesn't even know how we park our semis, like, side by side in the parking lot and stuff like that. She, she, she just don't understand. But, you know, she's like, how do you guys get so close without hitting each other and all of stuff? <laughs> I don't, I don't do doubles and triples. Oh, I don't do it because it's not available where I, where I it's not a, that, that kind of trucking isn't like prevalent where I live, you know what I'm saying? Like that you don't do a lot of doubles. Mostly you're going to find doubles and triples out in the wide open, like the Midwest and stuff like that. Like, you know, up near where probably where Asheville lives and all that kind of stuff. Any place that's flat, has long straight roads, you're gonna have lots of double triples doing that. Right. You're just gonna go from transportation hub to transportation hub and that's it. Yeah, I mean, well there's like a I don't know, I'm not so sure about that because I see a lot of doubles and triples in you know, areas where it snows a lot, like, you know, like Denver, Colorado, or, you know, Cheyenne. Push it. Usually if the wind's getting up like that, I just pull over anyway. I don't, I, I don't drive when it's not safe to drive. I just, you know, it doesn't make any sense for me to do that. You know, if I, if I get knocked over, then I'm going to spend more time down than I would if I just pulled over waiting for it to disappear. Like today, they, you know, my dispatch, uh, she got mad at me today because she said that she had, you know, had my appointments now from 7 o'clock this morning and the second delivery was supposed to happen at one o'clock this afternoon. So there's like 300 miles almost between the two the two spots. It's gonna take about four and a half hours to get there. But if I finish off at seven, and four and a half hours later, you know, it's 11:30, whatever. You know, like yeah. I mean, that's the, that's straight driving time. She's you know, she's not leaving me any time to you know stop using the bathroom, eat lunch, any of that. Now, they can they can make all the appointments they want, you know. I mean, she did she made me an appointment for twelve, and I was just like, nope, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be there till two. Then when I pulled up at two, she got mad, but then you know I was like, well, you know, I mean, you can get mad. It's not, it's, I can't, there's nothing that can be done about it. I mean, you're not driving the damn truck. <laughs> I, it's. They, they, they try, they're trying to do their job, you know, but they don't understand all the nuances of our job, you know. All they've got to go by is how fast the truck goes and how far it is from one place to another. Then they, that's, that's why they make the calculations that they make. So I tell them for every two hours of driving, add in, you know, like add in another half hour, you know, so. I think it's going to take me four hours to get there, add another hour in. Sheep. Yeah. Right.
Yep. Yep. I'm just, I'm just used to, like I said, I've been doing it for a really long time. The biggest thing you got to remember when you're a truck driver is to, to, to be patient and take your time. There's no, you're, you're not in hurt. We're not much in a hurry out here, right? I mean, somebody's in that much of a hurry that they want to cut you off, risk their life to get off of an exit, like, you know, 100 feet in front of you, then back off and let them do it, you know, because, yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna wind up dead sooner or later anyway. I don't wanna be part of that. They finally caught that tire thief. They finally caught that tire thief the other day. I'm glad they got that guy. I mean, I, he never stole anything from me, but he stole a lot of tires over, over his career. Yeah, there's a, okay, so there was a guy that was driving around. And basically, he had his own tire shop or something like that for semi truck. But semi trucks typically carry a spare for their trailer on the, on the undercarriage of their trailer. And this guy's been running around basically stealing those tires. Yeah. And yeah, I, don't, I, I mean, a single trailer tire runs somewhere. If you get a used one, they run about $100. Brand new, they can run you up to about $300. I'm just saying that, that that guy was stealing spare tires, like right? you know, like. But the fact of the matter is, he stole so many of them that uh, I mean, he was basically making his own business out of that and turning around, and sell, you know, steal a tire and turn around and sell it for a hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I, I don't I don't know anything else other than other than that they caught him. That's all I know. I know they called him and that's all I know. <laughs> I'm sure he was doing it for like at least 10 years. They've had all kinds of people. All right. There's been all kinds of people over the years that have done some really crazy shit. There was a guy out in Texas that was basically taking jars and, you know, jars and jars and jars of bolts and screws and, and nails and so forth like that and dumping them out on the interstate so that uh, people would have flat tires and have to stop at this place to get them fixed. They caught that guy. <laughs> kind of shit you can get people killed. I mean, if you're just driving along 70, 80 miles an hour and all of a sudden you have a blowout because, some, you know, a nail goes through your tire, that shit can kill you.
serious. Like, how would you like to go to jail? Be like, hey, what are you here for? Uh, dumping nuts and bolts and snails on my road, you know? Just, it doesn't sound like he'd get much time for it, but they got him for reckless endangerment and all kinds of shit. Well, I mean, right, so I mean, they were looking at where he had been dumping out, dumping out all that stuff, right, up and down this one stretch of road, and they were trying to determine how much damage he had caused, you know, and he, you know, apparently they, they were really trying to stick it to him there, you know, but they couldn't nail him for it, like, you know, it was all circumstantial, right, so they couldn't actually get him to do that, but uh, they stuck him with what they could. You know what I'm gonna do? Hello. What's that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to go to a Raiders game and go to the sidelines where they are, and then I'm gonna unscrew the lid on their cooler and teabag their Gatorade. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a picture of you doing it, you know, and send it to Ashley. I thought that janitor bit was a pretty good one. That was a, you know. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah, he does. He, you know. That's just the thing, though. I, I, I just like messing around. I, you know, I don't, I don't care what it is, you know. I just like messing around with Ashley. He's fun to mess with. Oh yeah, I mean, when he was sitting there talking about the, uh, you know, the Titans, I just threw a team out there. I don't even give a shit what the Titans do at all, you know. <laughs> I don't give a damn. I don't really care about anybody. I don't even care about football in general. I do care about messing with Ashley. And yet, I tell you, I mean, to be honest with you, if, if I was to swing by there, I'd, I'd want to stop by and see him, like, you know, because I know where he lives. I'd just swing by and see him and say, hey, what's up, man? If I ever do stop by and see him, I'm going to take a picture and put it on the, put it on Discord. <sighs> stop by and see him. You know, I ain't I don't have to. I don't have to look good anymore. I'm married, have my kids. I am now in Louisville. I'm still a pretty good ways away, still 200 miles plus away from home. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I don't tell her I might make it or I might not. It just depends on how tired I get all the way there. Well, she knows I'm coming. She just doesn't know when I'm going to be there. I told her just to make sure Julio was out of the house. <laughs> Let's make sure who we go into. 
She told me one day, she says, what would you do if you came home and, and who there was here? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry for you because he'd leave you for me. <laughs> uh, my wife's not going anywhere, man. I, we have been together for far too long, and we know each other in and out. I mean, I, I don't see how, t- I mean, I really, people who've been married for a pretty good long time, uh, I don't see how they could possibly ever even think about just going anywhere else. You're never, nobody else in your whole life is ever going to know you as, as well as that person. I mean, she could do that, but in the end, I'll just be like, okay, you know, that's be a that would definitely be a life-altering situation. I mean, it would be it'd be rough. I ain't gonna lie, but I seriously don't think she'd have any any easy any easier than me. Yeah, God, you know. I'm not a radio All that shit that I was telling him anyway was just making that shit up. I didn't even look anything up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do think he gets, you know, I do think he gets a little upset. He won't admit it, but I think he gets a little upset. That's when he leaves. You don't want to, you don't want to stay mad, you know, whatever. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I, I hate it when he gets to that point because I've gone too far and I don't know how to tell him, hey, look, man, it's just a joke. Chill, you know. All right, all right, all right. Then I'm just messing with you some more. I went through all the trouble. Listen, listen to this right here. I went through all the trouble, and I'm telling you, I did this, so you, you're going you're gonna to think this is some funny shit. All right? So my brother-in-law plays the lottery, or he did play the lottery. He don't play the lottery no more, but he used to play the lottery a lot. All right? See there? Listen. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so any which way, so I went out. And like you know, I think it was like I forget what it was, but he missed he missed watching it one weekend. And I you know, it was 
his wife told was telling me that he missed watching it or whatever. And I said, well, listen, you know, uh, I think I got that videotaped. I think I, I think I videotaped that. You know, and she, she said, why? I said, because I, I was going to miss it too. I just wanted to see what the numbers were. And she said, so what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to. I'm going to make, bring that videotape over to your house and on the night of the lottery, you know, the gets played or whatever, you're going to buy him a ticket with those lottery numbers that were already read out, you know. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. He was jumping up and down, like, you know, telling us all he was going to buy us all houses and shit, you know. He's going to quit his job and all this other kind of stuff. And we let, we let him go on and on and on, you know, all the way until the next day. But when he said, when he woke up that morning and said he wasn't going to go into work, you know, uh, his wife had to tell him the truth. You know, she said, listen, you need to go to work because we really can't afford to miss work. You know, you, you didn't really win the lottery. It was just a joke. Yeah. He was not a happy champion. He was, yeah, he was pissed at all of us for a long time. Hey, Joey, you know, you have to take a look at it from outside of yourself. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if that's the kind of joke that had been paid on somebody else, it'd be funny to tell it. Uh, yes and no. We, I mean, we sort of kind of did, you know. It was, uh, I forget exactly what it was. Uh, I was looking to buy some, I think it was, I was you know, on eBay looking to try to buy something. I can't even remember what the hell it was. And he had, uh, he put a post up there that said that he had one for sale or whatever. And then every time I went on there to buy it, he canceled, canceled the auction out or whatever. He did it like four or five times. Just fucking with me. And it wasn't nothing big, but same time I was saying, yeah, I was getting frustrated because I was trying to buy this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I'm going to go home and make some hotel, I think. That's what I'm going to eat for dinner. Oh, the Mr. Yeti? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could... Make sure you get the deep. You make sure you get the deep dish. You know, tell them about the deep, deep dish. They literally look. They they bring it out to you in this big, thick pan, right? Like this pan is like three inches thick. They bring this shit out to you in a pan, and it's got a spatula for to lift it up. But if you lift it up, it's not going to come out like you know, like it's basically just going to pour over the edges. Of the spatula, so you have to kind of put the plate like right next to it to get it on there, and then you're going to have to eat it with a fork. It's kind of, I mean, I, I want to say it's kind of like a cross between pizza and lasagna, but it's, yeah, 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 but it's, it's, I mean, it just doesn't have enough form to be called an actual pizza. I don't think, you know, it should even be called pizza. But it, it, that's what they call it. It's called Mr. Getty's Deep, Deep Dish Pizza. And they put everything in there. I mean, I'm talking about if you get the right kind, if you get the the, the uh, combo pizza, man, that's just got everything. It's got mushrooms and peppers and sausage. I mean, you can just, oh, so good. <laughs> oh, 
don't know. I, I don't think you get diabetes, but I certainly think you might just get like, you know, it may go into some kind of food coma or something. Fucking 800 calorie sliced pizza. <laughs> Making me want Mr. Gatti's pizza now, dude. I, but I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking about eating Mr. Gatti's pizza, and I'm I'm feeling full just thinking about it. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I mean. Uh, how do I how do I say okay so have you ever had a pizza that just had so much toppings on it that the that the toppings just fell off and you just ate toppings you know what I'm saying that's what it, it's it's like that Man. their cheese is a mix of mozzarella provolone and pepper jack I mean it's a a real spicy type of cheese. Got that, got that gooey stringing, the, the stringiness of mozzarella. And it's got like a little bit of body to it with the provolone. And then I think it's pepper jack. But something, it's got peppers and some kind in it. It's really spicy. I'm sure you can ask them, but I'm not sure they would have any. I'm, I'm telling you, man. You can eat, while you're eating it, you know, you're not going to taste the spicy. It's not until you stop eating you can taste the spicy at all. It's that kind of pizza that you just want to keep eating and eating and eating until you get sick. You know, and then you eat a little bit more and you make I mean, I've eaten, you know, there's just times when you just gorge yourself because the stuff is so good you can't stop eating. You know, I just don't, but there's not that many things that are out there like that. Uh, I went, I stopped at this place, I forget where it was. Uh, oh, Brahms ice cream. Have you ever heard of Brahms ice cream? It's even better than that. It's, this shit is like the, the, it pit, I, I just like the, the super supreme of all ice cream. That's, that's it. It is just phenomenal ice cream. I mean, it's so thick and so freaking. I, I just, I mean, you know, literally one milkshake is, you think nobody can drink more than one, you know, like that's what you're thinking to yourself. But I stopped off to this place and I got myself an orange cream sickle milkshake. Right? That's, that's what it was called. Orange cream sickle milkshake. Oh my goodness, dude. This fucking thing was so good. I fucking drank the whole thing in like five minutes. Right? Then I got another one because it was so good. But by the time I was halfway through that second one, I was sick as a dog. <laughs> Well, what? the first one was so good, I just, I just went through it like so fast that I wanted to do the second one. But I think what happened was is I drank it so fast that I didn't give my body enough time to catch up with, you know, like, everything was still just being filled up. That's all the spaces were still being filled up. I think I just overdid it. Uh, yeah, just conversation going on between leadership right now. No big deal. Talking about uh, the uh, Raiders, yeah, no, no big deal. I got fired. You got fired. <laughs> no. No, it's all Shield's fault. Don't worry about it. Oh man. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. 
So shield. Yeah. All right. On the flip side of things, so I'm my tailings now at three seventy five. Your tailings now. What? You say it's two seventy five. Three seventy five. Oh, maxed out. Okay. Yeah, and I got my um, last night. Curse went on a run and said we're gonna get you to this, and then we're gonna because I had all the patterns to make my spell fire. So all together now. Walking, walking through the door. Um, I mean, just like unraid buff, no food buff, no, no nothing. Just my regular, my own personal buffs I can do. I'm running at 883 fire damage unbuff with a 29% crit. So I'm literally going to be 1K fire damage uh, raid buff. Which means that's the bare minimum I can do. So, well, I'm gonna make a mage. I'm, I'm actually gonna make myself a mage. I didn't think I was gonna make one, but I'm gonna make one with the sole purpose of being a mage king. So yeah. All I'm gonna all I'm gonna do is have stamina and utility. If you don't have I mean, you don't have to have intelligence, but if it's got stamina and intelligence, I'll be good. Otherwise, just stamina. I think I can pull it off. Well, you have fun with that. Hey, I hate, I hate having a mage tank. <laughs> Something, something to have a maze that's got 14,000 hit points. <laughs> Sorry, what? I said it would be something to have So Z, when are you gonna get your uh, World of Warcraft account? You won't have to. I'm pretty sure you don't know how it works then. <laughs> Well, they don't use that term anymore. It's called an MMO. Masters multiplayer online. Yep. Hey, uh, Ashwin, did you watch that preview for the uh, video game high school that I put on the uh, oh shit! I think it was like a see the videos, a music videos page, I guess. Uh, no, I hadn't. It's not a music video. It's just a preview for the for the uh, TV show. But you should watch it, man. It's a, I mean, just say if, if, if you don't watch the TV show, you should watch the preview. It can be kind of kind of thing that you get into. I think it's great. Yeah, I'll check it out. I mean, that's the kind of thing I dreamed of when I was a kid. Like, damn, if, I, if there had been a real video game in high school, I would have loved to go to that shit. <laughs> yeah, I 
Yeah, we just got done watching the second season of The Witcher. Ooh. That was sick as fuck. Oh, that's really good. I like Cobra Kai, I like Yellowstone. Have uh, you watched uh, 1883 yet? I have not, but I've heard good things about it. Dude, it's fucking pretty badass. And I just finished season four of Yellowstone. Oh, yeah, I've only watched, like, the first two episodes. How, how, I mean, you can tell me, you know, you, you, you've seen all the rest of them, you know, how good it is. How about the first two episodes? Dude, dude, how, it is worth watching. I watched the, I finished watching the entire thing of Cobra Kai. I didn't even know that was the animation right there. I didn't like that. Last time I went through New Jersey, man, I hit a fucking pothole, and I, I swore my, that my, my tire was fixing to come off, dude. I thought I hit that damn thing so hard, uh, I thought I was gonna broke my axle. Did you feel your soul leave your body? It was a pretty good jolt, I'll tell you that. Holy shit, Shield. What's up? I just hit, went and hit Doomclaw to, out there in Neatherstorm at Quest. Yeah. And I, I was at 1.3k. And, and I'm still not, like, buff. I'm just running natural right now. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be pulling aggro off tanks. <laughs> The only reason I ever worry about you taking the thread off the tank is because if you die, then you're not doing any more DPS. You done all you're going to do until you get right back up. That, that lowers your DPS. Yeah, I know that.
Sorry, guys. Shield sounds like he's moving a refrigerator. It's driving a bit different, I'll tell you that. This new trailer I picked up is definitely uh, not, not doing me good up front. But they loaded it front heavy, so every time I hit a bump or something, it kicks me up and then down real hard. They're supposed to spread it out evenly if they can, but this one feels like they loaded a whole lot up. Yeah, it's going to put a lot of fucking pressure on your tongue. So every time you get like a, every time you get like a bump or a pothole or something like that, all that weight shifts around like real close to you and it's usually like hard jolts. Miles away from home. Less than three hours. I left out on the fourth, so whatever it took today. So I'm out for eight days. Well, that can't be right. I left out on the third, no, on the second. I think I left out on the second. I was gonna say I'm, I'm, I'm working on recap hour, so I haven't I've had to have been on on those days. See, we, we we're on an eight day schedule out here, right? We're allowed to drive seventy hours in an eight day time period, and then after that eighth day, we get our time back from our first day. So, if my first day out, I drove ten hours, then on the ninth day at midnight, I get you know, I get that I get that ten hours back. All right, guys, I'll be back in a sec. Oh man, I just thought it was a great joke. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna sweep my white castle and get a bunch of white castle burger boxes. Then I'm gonna stop off at McDonald's and buy their little 